Today's my talk is about sugar tera. So today I'm speaking mostly on toxin occurring near Japan or in the Pacific area. This is sugar toxin 1B group, 3C group. When the toxin gets into the fish by a food chain, fish oxidize the terminal part of the toxin, oxidizing sometimes or opening the ring. And both type 3C, 1B produce lot of congeners. So at the moment I determine structure up to 23 structures. And using this samples with no structure, we started analysis. This chromatogram shows the whole specimen. This is a quantitative means uh, the peak height is in relation to amount. The, each peak represents one nanogram per injection. So the, those response is not equal. Depending on the type of toxin, we obtain a different height of the peak. Uh, these are same quantitative. So we used 14 different toxins to obtain results. Uh, this is the extraction and analysis conditions, but all these conditions are in um, already published. So I just will move to the next slide. When we test the fish obtained from the southern part of Japan, the fish toxin profile is quite variable. Before we start this analysis, the notion is that Toxin 1B is a main toxin in almost all fish, but now toxin profile varies from fish to fish. In this fish, Toxin 1B is a minor compound, and in this uh, other congeners are major compound. Uh, in this fish, cigatoxin almost exclu exclusively dominant. And you may wonder how representative this toxin profile. So we have tested several specimens, sometimes more than 10 specimens, to know the toxin profile. And we are quite sure this profile's species Specific. And in Japan, the official method to determine toxin mass biohazard. So you have to see the correlation between mass biohazard and HMS analytical result. And for conversion, we have this conversion factor from microgram to mass units. And this conversion factor we obtain mostly on cytotoxicity test. Okay, because toxin amount is so small. So there's some uh, fluctuation. When we say cytotoxicity, there are several kinds of cytotoxicity tests. But what I'd like to say is Correlation quite good between LCMS analysis and mass assay results.
as I said, now Shivatera is moving from Okinawa to other part of Japan. Shigata used to be proven mainly in Okinawa, but now we have poison case from local fish. And almost all of the local fish involved in poisoning is this species, Oplegnathus fructatus. Uh, this is a very good game fish, very famous. When we take it to the profile, it's entirely different from what we find in Okinawa. Shigatoxin 3C and its analogs are main, major toxin. There's no Shigatoxin 1B type in this fish uh, caught in Miyazaki. So, toxin profile varies from fish to fish. Um, most of the toxic fish are from Okinawa and Amami Island. And um, when we test fish, toxic fish from Okinawa and Amami uh, contain CTX 1B. And on the other hand, fish which cause poisoning and caught in Marcus Island, but in the south, contain both 1B, 3C type. Another fish caught at Amami and caused poisoning in Hyogo near Kobe contained CTF 1B type. And there is a biological, ecological borderline between Amami and this type. And it is known uh, animals, plants, are uh, clearly different from here. So, and now, one of my friends collected can be discussed toxicus that produce cigatoxin and test phylogenetic uh, data that indicate uh, separation divided by the fish line. We find one grave in this area, another mostly in the north. So it seems gummy discus in the south and in the north produce different kind of toxin. Uh, this is the same thing. This fish contains only cyatoxin 3C and this fish caught in Let's see. Caught in Marcus Island and caused the poisoning in Ibarak in the north. It contains both 3C and 1B type. When we tested fish from Hawaii, it contained both 1B type, 3C types. It's a mixture. So toxin profile is very complicated. And this is a toxin profile of Gambi discus toxicus collected in Tahiti. And we have I have tested three types, all the same. They contain 4A, 4B, 3C, and these toxins are not unoxidized form. When the, this toxin gets into the fish, they are oxidized to produce this kind of toxin. So fish metabolize this toxin 
to oxidize form and but there's very small amount of oxidized toxin in gummy discus. So because of this very co highly complex toxic profile, we believe we need to use different toxins for identification. So we start a very ambitious project to produce different toxin or different material. It's very laborious work, you know. But I think we need this. So in order to move to an alternative methods, we start the problem in the sugar toxin we find in fish. Uh, metabolized toxin. We cannot get by culturing organism. So we had to collect fish and extract very dirty and purify. So target toxin is CT1B and it's analogs from fish. 3C, 4F, 4B, we collect from the culture, in previous culture. And we have some different toxins. But the amount of these toxins from fish are so small, we decided instead of providing a pure toxin, we decide to prepare some fish extract containing known amount of known species of toxins. So we start collecting fish. We had to buy fish from the market and surprising it's very expensive. You can see the price of <laughs> Even toxic, nobody just discarded by fishermen. When we ask the price, they say <laughs> they charge a very expensive <laughs> prices. This is a 500 kilogram of yen per kilogram. Now, one euro is about 100 yen. So, this five euro per kilogram. And we bought about 334 kilograms of fish. And that operation we found very expensive. We collect quite a variety of fish. And before extraction, we again tested the toxin profile. And the profile in the Terra Bohar, red snapper, is almost the same. But I like to show the highest of the toxicity in one fish, Chigatoxin 1B, is only 2 microgram per kilogram. So from 300 kilogram, we can calculate how much I get. Okay? Again, the highest is 5 microgram per kilogram, but again, quite small, and fish are small also. This uh, big one is uh, 1.6 microgram. This is the best. And the other one, this one contains mostly uh, deoxy CTX1B, so very precious source. But again, the amount is very low. So, but we are obliged to start to use this fish for extraction.
So the toxin profile of this fish are quite the same as I have shown already. Very strangely, this fish that caused in the north intoxication in other outside Okinawa it contained mostly sugar toxin 3C. But in Okinawa it contained sugar toxin 4A and 4B. So toxic profile are very different. So now uh, there are antibody available to to test sugar toxin or 3C. But we need toxin profile before you apply antibody. And so we cannot bypass the LCMS step. That means we need reference toxins. So uh, this extraction method, I don't go into detail. Uh, what we do is we cook the fish first to remove muscle from bones and also recovery of toxin is better when you cook fish. Maybe uh, toxin binds to sodium kernel and the cooking denature the protein to release toxin. So you get better. So the next problem is we isolate and purify sugar toxin only in small amount. But how to quantify this small amount? Uh, quantitative NMR uh, weight is impossible. So tiny, you know. And uh, quantitative NMR is unsuitable because toxin contain many seven, eight, nine members of ring. That is very flexible to produce many conformers. So signals, NMR signals are broad, uh, not quantitative. HMS uh, response varies from toxin to toxin. Um, so we decided to use fluorometric method. And we also made comparison between synthetic and natural toxin. One of my friends, Professor Hiram, synthesized 1B and 3C. So we can compare. But there are quantifications made based on the weight of very small amounts. So I need to test other methods. Uh, one method is fluorometric method. You can derivatize one B type toxin by uh, pro producing fluorescent ester. We have two types of this kind of uh, chrome horn, and uh, this is one of them. Uh, quite easy. We mix, leave it at 40 degrees, 40 minutes. Uh, it's a, a little longer, but uh, it can effectively convert to fluorescent compound, then you can do analysis by HPLC. And lowest amount of detect for detection was 0.7 nanogram. And you see why I added this 1990. This was done in 1990. 
So this is sensitivity is more than 20 years ago. Now we have much better improved instruments. It's maybe one tenth we can detect. But anyway, by using this uh, reaction goes quantitatively. So I test two 1B and it's a deoxy 1B. We got very good linear relationship and those two are quite overlapping. So we can say this chromatic method get to determine the different toxin. So uh, this is a, at the moment the stage I'm doing now and hopefully by the end of November you start distribution of different toxins um, only in limited scale. I can't supply everybody, but for important uh, laboratory or researchers, we like to provide at least 1B, 4A, 4B, 3 and other extra containing toxins uh, only in the mixture. Okay? But anyway, we hope they are useful. So, uh, now I move to the other topics. Um, I think many of you know that this part of fish is related to paratoxin. I've been saying it, it's, it's not true, but if you read carefully the literature that published, published articles are uh, based on very see, poor or weak ground. I can point out many to say this is not paratoxin, but for confirmation, we analyzed three parts of fish replicated in human incident and my colleague Dr. Suzuki also did analysis another specimen in all kinds of this specimen there is no paratoxin, no abatoxin, no reactors, whatever. And also in biological test I can deny there is no paratoxin it's analog. Um, uh, this is uh, how to analyze pyrotoxin. The results, we see no pyrotoxin or overtoxin in the sample, but when we spike, we can beautifully detect the pyrotoxin. So, in summary, on Sivatera, we confirm toxin profiles in different fish in different regions. And it's very fortunate that toxin profile is so complex from fish to fish, from region to region. It's a good for analytics to say, oh, you have different results from this fish. Yes. So my colleagues are very happy to find all the difference. But for political reasons, it's not good. Anyway, for uh, <coughs> from Okinawa, it's like this. Uh, mostly 1B type. But only this, uh, this fish is special to have 4A and 4B. And in the north, it contains only CTX. So we started securing toxic fish. Um, we obtained fish started extraction. Um, very unfortunately, Sivatera is not a big issue in Japan. 
So, finding A is not interesting very much. So, they slash the budget to half. So, very, yeah, very difficult position, but we are determined to continue. And the part of fish does not contain paradoxin. And because I have some more time, <laughs> I like to move to overtoxin. My effort to develop some method to, to understand the structure of overtoxin. I did this with my colleague in Ireland, and uh, I did analysis only once. <laughs> I asked to analyze again, but the machine in Ireland was too busy to analyze ours. So, um, yes, <laughs> not a very very pity, you know, for the company to you know, hope us. So, uh, the compound is so complicated, maybe you will not see <coughs> in the detail. The, the, the paradox was first found in Python and got the structure by two independent groups, Hawaii and Japan. And since that time, people are arguing what the true source of pyrotoxin, because pyrotoxin content in pyrotoxin is very variable. We fluctuate a lot from place to place. Apparently, it comes from other sources. So, when we found for the first time Osterox sciences produce pyrotoxin analogs. We assume other Osterox may produce pyrotoxin itself or related compound. And then the incident in Mediterranean stimulated studies on overtoxin osteopsis. And now, uh, overtoxin A was determined by Patricia Chipino to have this structure. The structure we found in osteopsin D and here, I show the difference later on. But stimulated by these studies, a lot of ecotoxicological studies started. And even in Japan and other places, many clones, strains, osteops accumulated. And phylogenetic studies started. So there is accumulation uh, data on genetic features of various clones. But the chemical information too much the genetic information is very scarce. So we need to we need some method to to provide chemical information more rapidly. Previous study was done mostly based on NMR. That requires uh, larger and pure material from large culture. I want to do this with small samples. With so, oh. these are pyrotoxin analogs with known structure. 
uh, there are many <laughs> folk champions. It's very to find, you know, there are so many. But today I'd like to talk about this, which we collected in Japan, in Okinawa. And another, another scientist, Professor Adachi, collected Osot Obata from other places. We compared um, in order to distinguish from Obatokin originating from Mediterranean stream, I put IK2, IK Island, the source of the Dianophrase. And uh, this without IK2 is Obatokin by Napoli too. When we compare the molecular formula, all over toxin, my IK2 strain is Adachi culture, and this is from Patricia Kimineo, all have the same formula. But when we compare the LC, over toxin IK2, AC, we cannot distinguish. But we can clearly distinguish from apatoxin isolated in Napoli. So there must be difference in structure. And what kind of structure difference? That's the question. And we have to do this small amount and only one analysis at Agilent. I've been checking the spectra for almost a whole, whole one year, <laughs> checking the detail. Okay, I like most of the time I do both negative and positive. Now, what I think is uh, as a reference, we used oxygen, oxygen D. That you know, I know start in detail because I did my analysis. So most of them gave molecular ion at about the same intensity. But if you compare the negative ion chromatogram, neg negative spectrum is quite simple compared to this one. In the positive spectra, we find a lot of peaks. And in some paper, it was described, these peaks are described as non informative peaks. That's not true. Any peaks has a reason to appear here. So we have to read why they are here. So we read this carefully and um, I'll tell you later. But first, negative spectra is very useful to, to find the major structure difference. For example, you have no method here, no method here, and uh, this hydroxy is present, which is absent in hydroxy A. So um, we have 42 hydroxy, and we have no 44 hydroxy, and so on. So it's very clear. And in positive, it, as I said, it's more complicated. Most cons conspicuous features positive iron is a lot of peaks caused due to dehydration from the molecule. And if we look in detail, we can we find that that correct com corresponds to conjugated polyene produced by dehydration. 
Uh, this conjugate polyene reflects where you have hydroxy, why you don't have. If you don't have hydroxy at proper position, it just stop there and don't, no extension. So this is quite useful to find this kind of polyene structure starting from here up to here. And, we, and also another polyene starting from here to here. That's important to judge absence or presence hydroxy in this area. Also, another here, it, we have another polyene structure that indicates presence, absence of hydroxy here, recently reported for autoxin F. Okay, so by following this polyene structure, we can no, not exactly identify, but uh, you can, I say, I'm saying mapping where you have methyl or you don't have methyl or hydroxy. So, for example, it's uh, one of the most typical polyene structure. It starts from here. Bond break is start here. And polyene start, and after this, this hydroxy is lost to form polyene here, and then this hydroxy lost to form this conjugation, and so on and so. And the reason I can explain, I like to explain the the compound has many. Hydroxy group that has oxygen. Oxygen has a lone pair electron. So if you have many oxygen, the environment is negative. So it's unfavorable to produce positive ion. So when the oxygen are lost by dehydration, then chance for getting more positive ion. And by forming conjugation that stabilizes the uh, life of the ion. And how stabilize? There is a good study on carotenoid. In the case of carotenoid, they have many conjugations. And how many conjugations is proper to stabilize? When conjugation only two or three, it's quite unstable. More stable at when the carbon chain was 17 or less than 20. And if you count this, this carbon number is 50 to 17. So about 20 carbon chain, just like carotenite, it's stabilized and give longer life for iron, that means mm, more chance for detection. Okay. And we can find this kind of many conjugated structure. And I like to say this is quite important. Not in form, not like in some papers. You know. So and we follow this exactly with exact impressivity. It's caused by loss of water. We are quite sure. So with overtoxin negative, it's quite easy to say the problem is we assume from positive ion spectra, our overtoxin A has no hydroxy in this position. But because of the presence of amino group, this part of segment 
doesn't give good positive ion. So it's quite difficult to say. So, but by following the polyene structure, we see there's no hydrox here. There's other possibility. This was lost. It gives, when this hydrox is absent, it gave the same ion. But by comparing detail, I prefer to say our overtoxin has no hydrox here. And the overtoxin A from Napoli has hydroxy here, no hydroxy here. The same as ours. But the homotoxin A from Napoli group has no hydroxy group here. In that case, we cannot follow this conjugation. And we know on LC HPLC, they are definitely different. So there must be difference between two overtoxin. So we assume the difference is here, not here. And overtoxin D and E are very small amount. And uh, quite difficult to separate. So I decided to study as a mixture. And it is possible. And uh, I, don't, I don't have much time to go in detail, but uh, the difference is overtoxin E has hydroxy group here. And overtoxin uh, E, overtoxin E has hydroxy here. Overtoxin D has instead hydroxy at 44 position. So, with using very small amount of mixture, we could assume, I'd say it's not a complete structure, but at least we can obtain working structure. And so now I know many people are growing postrops. Even with a small amount, we can say we can match the genetic information with structure information with quite small amount of samples. And we can say this different from Mediterranean or Japanese one or from uh, Atlantic Ocean or, and so on. It's, so I would not say it is uh, perfect to get the whole structure, but at least we can get uh, some idea what is different to, to say. So I go back to very complicated <laughs> Where well, we have this function which has hydroxy where we can now map. So I repeat them. I'm not saying we can get whole structure perfectly, but still this kind of analysis would be useful in many. Okay. I think now it's Time to finish. Thank you very much for your attention.